In today's video, you're going to find lots of amazing spring garden inspired DIYs. I want to welcome all of you here today. My name is Donna. So for this DIY, I am upcycling a tin can. I love to reuse old tin cans. So I am going to be covering this one with this fabric. It is natural cotton and I've just rolled it just so I could get a rough estimate of how big my piece needs to be and I cut that down to size. Next, I soaked it in some coffee and I put it in the oven and allowed it to dry. I just find that it just works really well if you can put it in the oven. So I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach it to the outside of our tin. So I just want to take a moment and just mention to you that this is a compilation of some past videos that I have done. I will have all the original links down below in a playlist for you as well as pinned in a comment section for your convenience. So once the fabric has been glued around your tin, you can trim off any excess and then you can start to decorate. I have this burlap flower in my stash and I removed the pearl little accent. I didn't think it fit the rustic farmhouse look and I replaced it with this pretty yellow vintage button. Now for another rustic touch, you know me by now and my love of birch bark, I decided to add some birch bark leaves. So I just cut it out of this flat piece of birch bark. I collect my birch bark from the forest floor. I never peel it off the trees as that could kill the trees. And then I allow it to dry and cure at home. So I cut out a total of three leaves and now using my hot glue gun, I'm going to glue the flower onto the tin can. It's opposite from the seam that we had at the back side. And then I'm also going to be adding some hot glue to the back of these leaves and putting them into place. Now my bark is thick, so it will create quite a dimensional look on the tin. If your birch bark is thinner, then you could probably mold it to the shape of the tin. But um, like I said, my birch bark is quite thick, so I couldn't do that, but I really like how it's looking. I think it just looks so cool and so unique. Definitely a rustic touch. So now I'm going to be adding some spring flowers. I got these yellow ones from a store called Dollarama. I think Dollar Tree has something similar. And these white ones I actually did get from Dollar Tree. I'm just using my wire cutters to cut them down to size so I can create a bouquet to fit on the inside of our tin. Now you could use some fresh flowers instead if you'd like, but I had these in my stash so I just went ahead and used those. Once they're cut down, then I'm going to be creating a bouquet. So the yellow ones, I just kind of fanned the stems out and then I gradually added in the white flowers. So if your flowers are still lo too long, then go ahead and trim them down as needed. So this is just another little natural touch I like to add to my faux florals and that is to use some real twigs. I will just cut some branches down to size and then mix them in amongst my florals and it just makes it look more realistic. And that's it. It was so easy to make and it looks so beautiful for any spring farmhouse decor. So for another rustic farmhouse spring DIY, I decided to go in my sash and I found this frame from Dollar Tree. I picked it up last year and I happened to have a piece of birch bark that was really nice and flat and I cut it down to size to fit within the frame. Next, I am going to be using this cotton fabric again. I just really think it works well with the rustic farmhouse look and it looks great against our birch bark. So again, I'm just trimming it down to size so it fits on the inside of our birch bark. 
And then I'm gonna be coffee dyeing this. Again, I just soak it in the coffee, squeeze out the excess, and then I laid it flat on a cookie tin. And then I put it in the oven to allow it to dry. I just had it at a low heat. So here's our fabric all ready to go. You can see how nice and flat that is. I found these stamps from Dollar Tree and I think they're so beautiful. So I'm gonna be using some archival ink. I will have that listed in my Amazon affiliate store for you to check out if you'd like. I'm trying out the potting soil color, but I do end up changing it out and I'll show you why here in a minute. But first I wanted to test out my stamp placement as well as the ink color so I'm just figuring out what stamps I want to use and then what you will actually want to do is lay them out flat side up onto your fabric so you can make sure that the stamps placements will fit on your fabric and then you want to take your acrylic stamping block and press that down and then the stamps will be exactly where you need it now I'm going to ink up my stamp and then I'm gonna press it onto this coffee dyed manila tag, and that will give you an idea of what this will look like on the fabric. And that color was just too light, so I decided to go with black archival ink. Now archival ink is a permanent ink, so then it won't like be affected by any water, which is great for a project like this. So you can see the black looks so much better on the tag, and I now put this ink on onto the fabric and you'll just see how beautiful that turned out. So now I'm going to be using some glue on the back of our fabric and this is where I didn't want this to activate our ink. Um, it de really depends on what type of glue you use. I just used a glue stick and I pressed that down. Um, but yeah, it just really depends on what type of glue you use. So I put that all into place and now I am going to just add a little accent of the word spring that I cut out from an advertisement. And I've also got this piece of birch bark and I'm just inking up the edges using some distress ink. And then I'm gonna glue our pieces into place. So I really think this looks great, but I felt like it was still missing a little something. So I decided to add a simple burr, sorry, jute twine bow to the top of our frame. And that is it, it's ready to put on display. I think this is such a lovely, pretty touch for some rustic spring decor. So this is a project I've been wanting to try out for a while. I have got these antique books and they were actually my great grandma's book. They've got her signature in them. And I have been wanting to do something really neat with these. And I was inspired by some ideas that I had seen on Pinterest. So as you can see, this one's being bound or an attempt to bind it with some tape to help hold it together. I just removed that tape and there was some residue left from the adhesive. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that off. So I just left it as is. And now I am just going to start to embellish this. So I cut out a strip of fabric and again, I sprayed the edges as I wanted to create a strip of birch bark to go around this bundle. There were a lot of birch trees in around where my great grandma had lived and I thought it would be a really neat touch to add. Now the key to this project is that I am going to try my best not to get any glue onto these books. So having this strip of fabric is actually gonna be an important part of this project. 
So here I'm tearing off some thin strips of birch bark. It's just like the paper layer of the birch bark. And I'm going to be using my hot glue and attaching these strips to the fabric. So I'm just being careful not to add too much glue because I didn't want to add too much bulk and I wanted this to be quite flexible so I could wrap it around our book bundle. So I continued to glue down any of the loose edges and then I just made sure that both ends of the fabric didn't have any bark on them because I wanted to glue those two ends together. So our fabric birch bark strip is all complete and now I wrapped it around the book bundle and then I'm going to glue those strips together as you can see right here. So I'm really loving how this is looking so far and any spot that's lifting a little bit I just go ahead and add just a little bit more of hot glue. So for another added vintage touch I have coffee dyed this lace trim that I had in my stash and I'm just going to wrap it around the middle of the birch bark strip. So I just found the middle of my lace and I glued it just gently tacked it into place on the underside of our birch bark and then I'm just going to tie a knot and that will help to hold this all together. So I wanted to put some words on this and I thought the best way to do that was to use a manila tag that I had coffee stained and again I'm just going to use these words that I had cut out from an advertisement that was for spring and I'm going to distress the edges using this distress oxide ink and again that will be in my Amazon affiliate store. You could also pick it up at craft stores such as Michael's. I just add it to the edge of my words and you can see the difference it gives right here. So I'm going to be using my glue stick again to attach these words to the manila tag. A manila tag is just a little shipping tag. So another added little touch I like to do is to highlight those words by using some black ink to go around the edge. This is something I like to do when I do mixed media art or some art journaling. It just really helps the words to pop. So now I'm going to be attaching this tag to our bundle using this string by just putting it through the hole and then I'm going to be just tying this loosely around the lace. I didn't want to tie it on tight just in case I decided to move it. I wasn't exactly sure the placement I was going for at this point so I just tied it on very loosely. These books won't be getting moved around much anyway since they're so delicate but doesn't that look so pretty? So for a final touch I am going to be adding this bird's nest that I had made. I will link the tutorial on how I made this down in my description box and it also shows how I made these little eggs. So I glued those eggs into place and then I generously apply some glue to the fabric and birch bark. I did not get any on the book surprisingly which is awesome and I put the nest into place. So I should have tied this lace before I added the nest, but I was able to get a nice loose bow at it. And then that is it, it's ready to put on your farmhouse display. I think this is just so beautiful. It turned out exactly the way I had hoped. I think it is just such a beautiful spring farmhouse touch for your home decor. So I had these ceramic mushrooms last year that I had done up for a previous project. I'll have the link to that video down in my description box if you want to check that out. And honestly, I kind of got tired of them. So I decided to revamp these mushrooms this year as I was inspired by something that I had seen on Instagram. So this is how I had done up these mushrooms and I used gesso. This is the Artist Loft brand from Michaels. It's a nice 
thick and creamy consistency. And I gave two coats to each of these mushrooms, allowed it to dry well in between each coat. Now, gesso is a primer, so that's why I decided to use this. So the mushrooms are now dry and I am gonna be doing decoupage on these. I'm using the Deco Art brand of decoupage glue and it's in the matte finish. And I'm also gonna be using these tissue papers that I picked up from Dollar Tree over the past few years. They've got gorgeous patterns. You'll just have to go and see what your store has. So what I like to do is tear these pieces down into some smaller usable pieces. And as you can see, I'm making sure that I have some of those leaf shapes intact. These ferns are so beautiful. I really, really like those, especially for something that is nice and gardeny. So I'm gonna just continue to rip my pieces down until I got a good stash. So I'm also gonna be including this pattern. It's got some smaller leaves and I'll just tear some of those pieces out as well. So I'm sure many of you have done decoupage before, but for those of you who haven't, you'll want to apply a layer of your glue first, and then you're gonna want to press your papers into the glue. As you can see, I'm getting some on the underside as well, as I'm going to have some of the tissue paper overhang on the bottom edge. Then I'm gonna just push the paper into place and I'm molding the tissue paper around the mushroom edge just to keep that shape. Continue to add some glue where needed. You need to make sure you've got good contact between your paper and your glue. So once you have all the paper connected to the surface of your mushroom, then you can go back in and apply some more glue over top. Then I like to just take my finger and smooth it out as best I can. I'm okay with the wrinkles. I know there's some techniques out there where you can apply this without the wrinkles, but I honestly am okay with those. So I'm just gonna continue to add my tissue paper and my glue onto the surface until I have my mushroom top all covered. Once it's covered, then you can set it aside and allow it to dry. Now I'm gonna show you one with the flowers. So I had this tissue paper in my stash, oh, I think from about three years ago, and it is gorgeous. I love this little flower pattern. So I'm just going to do the same technique and apply the tissue paper onto the surface of my mushroom until I get the desired look that I like. So I did end up having to tear some of my pieces into smaller bits just to cover up some of the spots that um, had kind of a blank white spot. So just uh, feel free to do that if you need to with the pattern that you use. So here's how those mushrooms look as is, but I wanted to show you just one more technique to try out on these if you want more of an earthy and rustic look. And that is gonna be coming right up. So I think these are just beautiful as is, but I really wanted to see if I could make these a little bit more grungier. So I'm going to be applying some gel walnut stain. Again, this is from Deco Art. I love Deco Art's products. I think they're great. Um, I've got them all listed in my Amazon affiliate store for those of you who are interested. I've seen their products at dollar stores and craft stores as well. So you apply the gel stain using a rag and then I felt like it just was a little bit too much so I'm just adding a little bit of water to my rag and I'm pulling some of that gel stain off just to give it a bit more of a cleaner look but you can apply as much of the stain as you'd like to create the look that you want. So you can add a sealant at this point using uh, just a clear spray paint and then they would be usable for outside, but aren't they pretty? I think these mushrooms are just so perfect for some garden home decor. 
I would even place these outside in my yard in a protected place. Okay, so for this next project, I'm using one of these galvanized mason jars that are on a stand, along with these gorgeous rub-on transfers, all from Dollar Tree. So I'm just trimming off the bottom as I want my rub-on transfer to cover the entire surface of this mason jar. So once I got the placement figured out, I'm just going to flip it over and trace around on the back side so I know exactly where to cut it out. Just use some scissors, but if you need to use a craft, um, craft knife, then by all means feel free to do so. So you can see how well this fits on the front surface here. So I'll just peel off the backing and then place it on top of the galvanized mason jar. It's going to look so, so pretty. I am loving this pattern. So you're going to use either a craft stick or here I've got this bone folder and you're just going to rub it down. And then every once in a while you want to peel it back just to see if the image has transferred onto your surface. So you'll just continue to rub on the backing until you get the completed transfer. So as you can see, I have a few scraps left over. So I'm just gonna trim some of those images out and continue to layer the pieces onto the jar until I get the look that I like. Isn't this beautiful? So you can definitely leave it as is, but I'm gonna take it a step further. So I'm just using these tumbling blocks, again, that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and I am creating two rows of three. I'll just be using some hot glue and gluing these two rows end to end, as you can see here. So now I am going to be gluing the piece to two strips together using some pieces. As you will see here, I'm just going to again be using hot glue. So you might be wondering what I'm creating. I'm going to be creating like a bit of a pocket for the back side of this mason jar. I want to use some florals in this piece. So if you can think of something else, like maybe you could cut a cardboard tube in half or some other thing, you could just use that on the back side. But I had these tumbling blocks on hand, so I thought I would just use some of them up. So I'm just going to glue these pieces onto our two strips, and then I will be gluing it into place on the back side of our mason jar. So I didn't glue one piece on the very top. I didn't want to be restricted as to how I can blend my, or sorry, bend my stems. Uh, but just use your own judgment on how you create this back piece. So I'm just using again, hot glue and I'm working very quickly and I'm putting this piece into place on the back side. It fits really well and it isn't too heavy. As you can see, it's not falling over, which is perfect. So I wanted to just bring the rim of the lid of this jar to life. So I'm just adding a bit of some jute twine, use any string or lace or what have you on hand. I'm just tying off a simple knot, but if you want to add a bow, feel free. So once you've got that into place, then you can go into your stash of florals. Dollar Tree has been amazing at bringing these faux greenery flower bunches in stock. They remind me of some meadow flowers that you would go out in your garden or in the forest to pick. I just am going to just stick the stems in the back side. They fit really well and because they're on a wire, you can bend them to shape until you get the desired look. 
So I felt like there was something missing on the bottom. So I'm just trimming down a few pieces of our greenery and I'm going to glue those into place. Another nice little touch would be to add some flowers or some moss a little bird or butterfly, use whatever you have on hand to decorate your piece. So you know me and my love of nature and how much I love to add twigs to my faux arrangements like this. So I've again just got a few sturdy branches and I'm going to tuck them in. This is totally optional. Use whatever you would like. I think this turned out so beautiful. I love it so much. And it really reminds me of just going out in the garden, picking some flowers and tucking them in a beautiful decorative jar. Dollar Tree has been bringing in these decorative garden plaques for several years now. They also have some rocks and I have done one of these up before. I'll link that video down below, but somebody requested that I do one with color. So I know this is all nice and colorful as it is, but I'm not that crazy about it. It looks kind of cheap <laughs> and I knew I could do it up. So I covered it with some of um, my gesso again and that covered up all the gray and that a uh, kind of a messy paint job honestly then once the gesso was dry i'm going to be giving it a coat of cream paint now you could work over top of the gesso but for this technique i really like the cream colored paint so i just add one coat of that allow it to dry and now i am ready to add my color so I'm going to be using this beautiful spa blue and a navy blue and then um, this is olive green and leaf green um, I believe that is muslin and it's a darker coral and then this is a yellow you can get these paints again through my Amazon affiliate or you can get them in the craft store most of them are deco art there might be a few other ones from Michaels so I'm just using some round paint brushes and I'm going to start going over the embellishments this again. This time though, I am being careful with how I apply the paint. I found that before the coverage wasn't very good and it was kind of sloppy. It also had um, some glitter, which I was not a fan of. So I'm just going in now and just layering some of my paints this is optional do whatever you feel free to do you could even just leave this plain like i did in my previous project so i'm just going to continue to blend my colors until i get the look i like on all the decorative elements on the surface So once you've painted your piece in the colors of your choosing, you're going to allow it to dry well. And then I'm giving it a coat of this varnish in a matte and I allow that to dry well. Now the reason why I am doing this is because I needed to seal this all up for the next step that we need to do. And if I didn't do this, it would absorb all of what we're about to do. So I'm going to give this a coat of my wal walnut gel stain. I'm using this stiff bristle brush to get into all those little nooks and crannies to bring the words bless our home to life. 
And I find that this nice stiff bristle brush allows me to get that stain right in there. So you'll just want to wipe it off using a rag. So if I did not seal this all off using the varnish, the paint from underneath, like the craft paint or the gesso and the stonework, it would have absorbed quite a bit of that stain and it would have made it way too dark and wouldn't have allowed me to remove it as I'm doing here. So I'm loving how this is looking. It looks very earthy. I'm applying more to the side, again, using a rag to wipe off any excess and then I'll seal it up and it's ready to be used. I think this is so beautiful. I'm so happy with how this turned out. So this is a project I had done several years ago and it's using a Dollar Tree wire mesh basket. You'll want to remove the handle. Next you want to get some faux pussy willows. I got these ones from a store called Dollarama here in Canada and these are great because they've got a wire stem. I'm just going to be removing the tags and cutting these down to size. I am going to be cutting them apart just using some wire snips. So I'm also going to be needing some florist wire. I have this white wire. I actually got it from my local dollar store, but you can use any wire that you have on hand. I'm cutting it down to some smaller lengths. Next, I'm going to be bending my pussy willow stems and then I'm going to be wrapping them around the bas basket rim and then just intertwining the tips into the wire mesh. I'll be using the florist wire just to help secure the pussy willow stems onto the basket rim. I'll be adding all of these pussy willow stems around the edge to give a really pretty rustic and natural gardeny look. I thought this would be a beautiful basket to use to display your Easter eggs in or to go and collect some Easter treasures for an Easter egg hunt. Isn't that cool? I'm really loving the way this looks. All right, so for the next step, I'm going to be using this coconut fiber. Again, I got this from Dollarama, but you can get these at Dollar Tree as well. I'm placing it down on the bottom, again, just to give it that rustic natural look that I'm going for. So for the handle, I am going to reattach it. And then I'm going to be covering that wire handle with some twine or some fabric, whatever you would like to create more of a rustic look if that is something that you choose to do. I found this crinkle in a natural color again from Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill up our basket with that crinkle. It's like a basket filler. You can find it in the gift section at Dollar Tree fill that right up and <laughs> it's just looking so so cute so again you could use this for your easter eggs for display but i'm gonna fill this up for with some treats for my kids i've got these these cute treats and a keychain we always love these mini eggs i think it's just a staple at this time of year just fill up the basket any way you'd like with some fun treasures from the dollar store. So I'm just going to layer everything in until I like the way that it looks. This is just such a fun gift at Easter time. And again, it could be used for decor or as a gift basket. So for this first project, I am going to be using this square die set, but I am going to tell you an alternative for this project. I am going to be using this square set to create a frame. I'll be laying out the two dies on this wood grain paper that I had in my stash. I just needed to cut it down to size to fit it through my Sizzix die cutting machine. 
So if you don't have this, you could definitely just use a regular picture frame, but I wanted to use this canvas that I had in my stash, but I needed to create a frame for it. So I thought this would be a good alternative. I just used some washi tape to adhere the die sets down so they wouldn't move. I wanted them to stay even on the paper. So I thought it would be fun just to share with you how you can use tools such as this for home decor projects. So once I had my die sets all set onto my paper, I then run it through my Sizzix machine. Again, I will be sharing some alternatives on how to create this project in case you don't have this particular machine. So I've got my frame all cut out and now it's time to prep my little canvas. So I'm using the back side of this canvas. I'm creating like a little bit of a shadow box. I'll be giving a coat of this beautiful sea foam green color on the inside of this little panel here. And I just applied one coat. It's such a pretty color. I'm really enjoying it for springtime. So I'm going on the inside of the canvas frame as well. So I had these stickers from Dollar Tree that I had picked up last year and they're so, so beautiful. So I'm just figuring out which image I wanted to use. And then the beauty of this is that it is on clear plastic. So you can test it out to see if you like the look of your piece within your little frame that you've created. So these stickers are dimensional, but I find that there isn't quite enough foam supporting the pieces. So I'm just adding my own a little bit of foam and just adding it where I felt it needed it. I thought this little bike would be so cute for a little spring decor. So I'm going to add some branches to the background first before I start to lay out any of my other pieces. So I'm just cutting the branches down to size to fit in the back of the canvas. You can omit this step if you want and add something else, but I just really love to add a touch of nature to my projects. Once you have the placement figured out, you can then apply them with some hot glue. Now, I left a little patch open because as you can see, I do have a foam back sticker on here and to apply the rest, I am just using some hot glue and that will stick to the branches. So I felt like my piece just needed one little added touch. So I decided to add this spring banner sticker to the piece. So to apply the little frame that I made, I am using Aileen's tacky glue and I'm just spreading it out evenly using my finger and then you can add your little paper wood grain frame. So if you didn't have this, then you could definitely just do this within a picture frame if you'd like, or you could just have put, done it in a can the canvas as is, but I really like the way it turned out. So I wanted to place this on an easel. So I had this little one in my stash and I'm painting it with some cream paint. It's like an off-white. It's really, really pretty. I'll put my piece on the stand and then it's ready for display. I think this is just such a simple little touch of spring. It would look great on a bookcase, on a tiered tray or a little vignette. I really like how this turned out. Okay, so for this next project, I had this house wood shape in my stash and I picked it up from Michael's a few years ago. I am going to be using this spring foam green color again. It's put out by Deco Art. I'm going to give this wood piece two coats of paint. I allow it to dry well in between each coat. So while that's drying, I dug into my stash of felt. I'm using a really stiff felt and I'm gonna be using this, this die set. It is a doily die set and I'll be using my precision plate to cut this out. Now you wanna use a precision plate when you are cutting out intri intricate dies. As an alternative, you could definitely use a paper doily instead. 
So I'm just gonna cut this felt shape out and then to clean it up, I will be using an embossing tool to poke all the extra little bits out. So you can see here how nicely the dye had cut through that stiff felt. It worked really, really well. So my wood piece is all nice and dry and I'm going to be layering this beautiful white lace that I had in my stash using some fabric glue. So I just applied that to the surface and I'm just spreading it out evenly all over and then I'll place my lace on top. You probably could just use some regular glue. Um, I had the fabric glue in my stash so that's what I went ahead and used. So I'll set some weight on top and allow that to dry. Once the glue has dried, you can then trim off the excess and then it's time to decorate our wood piece. So you're going to need a needle and some thread. I am using some embroidery floss and you'll also need a button. Now that embroidery floss really matched well with that little spring brander I had. I'm going to be using the embroidery thread to stitch on this really pretty white button to the middle of our felt doily that we had made. So I'm just going to do a simple little stitch and I made sure that my tail ends were actually on top. I wanted the little knot that I'm going to create to show just for a little added extra touch. Once the button's in place, you can start to glue everything together and I will just be using a hot glue gun for this. So I just put a bit of hot glue on the back of the doily and put it in place and then I remember removed the foam back sticker on this banner and I'll apply that using some hot glue. So again, I'm using a little touch of nature and I'm using these branches and it has this beautiful lichen on it. I really liked how that looked and I just felt like this little house piece just needed a little extra something. So I went ahead and I glued down these pieces to the roof peak and then I will also be adding some to the base of the house. So you could embellish this any way you'd like. Some flowers on here would be really pretty as well. Once you're done, it's ready to be put on display. Again, I thought this would be great on a tier tray, on a bookshelf, or for a vignette. I really like how pretty and simple this turned out. Great for spring decor. Okay, so for this next project, I'm using this flower die cut set. It does cut out four pieces, as you can see. And what I'm gonna be doing is actually creating my own flowers. Now, if you don't have a die like this, you can definitely use faux flowers for this project. I will uh, just pop these out and then I'm going to be using a piece of foam as well as my embossing tool to create my flowers. So I just flip my piece upside down. I'm scoring each petal in the middle. And what that will do is allow me to bend them just to create a bit of dimension as I put them together. I'm also just kind of forming the center as well. And that will just help me to piece all my pieces together. So I'm just gonna do this for all of my flowers and then I'm gonna show you how to put it all together. So 
So once you have all your pieces formed, you're going to need a stamen. Now I have these in my stash. I'm just going to apply it by adding some hot glue and poking the stem through the hole that we had. Now, if you don't have any stamens, you could use a button or even like a flat back pearl. But now, as you can see, I am just going to be layering all our pieces and attaching these together using some hot glue. I do try to offset all the petals. That will just help to create a, a really pretty flower. And that is it. I just scrunch it together a little bit and then you've got a beautiful a little paper flower. I tried to create a variety of colors as well. And for our leaves, I'm going to be using this leaf die cut and I'm going to be cutting some assorted green colored papers from my stash. So I tried to get a variety of shades and then once you've got your leaves all cut out, you're going to actually want to cut these ones down. Now that's what I did for this one and as you can see I'm folding the leaf shapes just again to create a bit more dimension. There are die sets out there where you don't have to cut them apart, it really just depends on what you have in your stash. And again, another alternative would be to use some faux leaves. So you will see me using some distress inks once in a while. And I had this color called peel paint and I just added a touch to this lighter green scrapbook paper just for a little bit of dimension. Again, I like to kind of fold them a bit. It just creates a bit more of a realistic look for our leaves. So you can see the variety of color colors I created right here. All right, so for the next part of this project, you're going to need a hoop. This embroidery hoop is approximately seven inches in diameter. And then I am going to be going into my stash and selecting some branches. I really like these ones. They have a bit of a yellow lichen on them. They're so pretty. So you can trim them down as needed and create kind of a pattern as you like. And then I'll be using my hot glue gun to glue the pieces onto our hoop frame. You can use as many branches as you'd like. I really like to crisscross them a bit, just like you would see in nature. I think this is looking really pretty. So now it's time to embellish our hoop. I'm just gonna trim down the flowers a little bit and I'll just figure out my placement first before I start to glue things into place. If you're using four flowers, then you'll definitely wanna do the same thing. It's always great to just kind of get an idea of where you wanna put things before you start gluing them into place. At least that's what I find for myself. And I'm just figuring out where I wanna put leaves as well. I don't lay everything out right away, but especially the flowers, I like to try to do that. So once you have the look you like, you can then just glue everything into place with some hot glue. I did end up going in and creating some smaller flowers. I just felt like I needed just a few more. So um, I just yeah layered up some flowers that were smaller than what I had originally made. So once I have everything in place, I'm just going in and adding a little bit of hot glue on the back to help hold everything into place. And then it's ready to hang on the wall. I love this. I think it turned out so, so beautiful. I can't wait to hang it on my wall for the spring season. I hope you enjoyed it as well. tray I'm going to be using today. I had thrifted this and I had flipped it and redid this piece and I'll have the video for this link down in a playlist for all of you as well as at the end of this video. 
So you can see that it is a very unique piece and I wanted to recreate it for springtime. I'm including this nest that I had made. Again, this will be listed in that playlist I will provide for you. It is a beautiful bird's nest that's very unique. I slipped this in at the bottom of this tray and then I begin to layer it with some other things such as greenery that I picked up from Michaels as well as some other pieces that I picked up from Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree had these florals for the last few years and some people have said they've seen them in their store again. They are great. I reuse them from year to year. So there's no real right or wrong way to recreate this. It's just all about layering all the different pieces. So for the second tray, I'm including this ceramic butterfly that I picked up from Dollar Tree last year. It is beautiful. I believe they had it in pink as well. And then I'm also including this little piece of artwork that I had made recently. So I just slipped that in on that second tray as well. And then again, I am going to be using those Dollar Tree florals and start to layer all the pieces together. For the top tier, I am going to be using this little jug that I picked up again from Dollar Tree. They had them last year and they had them in other colors as well. I really thought this color looked so pretty with the butterfly. And I'm including this cute little gnome that I had refinished. Again, it is from Dollar Tree and I'll have that video for you in that playlist as well. It turned out so cute. I just love how he looks and I had made some other colors as well. So I needed to give him a little bit of height. So I'm just adding this little wood slice in the corner of the tray and then I'll place our little guy there. So again, I'm going to be adding this greenery I got from Michaels. I like to collect different stems throughout the year from Michaels uh, when they are on sale. And then I just use them from season to season. And I just bent the stem and put that in place. I'm again adding some of those Dollar Tree florals as well. I just filled up the vase with those. And then I added some layered bits in front of the gnome and the jug. So if you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love to add a touch of nature. So I had foraged these branches and I'm going to tuck them in here and there. I find that adding a little touch like this just really adds uh, just a little bit extra that makes it a little more realistic and just brings it all together. I think this spring tier tray looks so beautiful, great for your spring decor as well as Easter. I think it's great to be able to use some pieces that you have made from past seasons within the project like that and reuse items that you already have on hand. I am really happy with how this piece turned out. So for this first DIY, I'm using this wooden cross that I had found at Dollar Tree. You're also going to need a wooden tag and some wood beads in the size of your choosing. I am going to be using this burnt umber craft paint and I just removed the jute twine hanger and I'm applying a coat to the cross. Now this is going to be acting like a stain. 
So I allow that to dry and then I'm going to apply the paint to the tag as well. Once both pieces are dry, I am now going to be using this beautiful sea spray craft paint by DecoArt and I'm applying it again to both the cross and the tag. I'm applying two coats of paint and I'm allowing each coat to dry well. Both pieces are nice and dry. Now I'm using a sanding block and distressing the edges as well as the surface. You can distress this as much as you'd like. I'm really enjoying this technique. I have used it on a few other projects and I just think it gives that, that rustic farmhouse look. So I wanted a little bit more antiquing. So I am gonna be using this archival ink in potting soil color and I'm applying it to the edge of our wood pieces. That just helps just accentuate the rusticness of these pieces and adds a little bit more color. Once that's all done, then I am going to be applying some matte varnish to the pieces and that really helps to pop the distressing that we've done. The archival ink is a permanent ink, so as you can see, the color was not being pushed around. So I wanted to add a couple of Bible verses to the tag. So I'm going to be applying John 3:16 and then Philippians 2 verse 8. The fill is short for Philippians. I am using these clear alphabet and number stickers that I had in my stash. You could, of course, use a, your Cricut machine or any other cutting machine. But since I had these in my stash already, I thought this would be an easy way to do it. I am using um, a marker to add my dots. So I'm going to flip my tag over and apply the stickers for the second verse. I had a little bit of a gap at the end, so I decided to add a heart there to fill in that space. So now I am going to be working on the beads. You'll need a little bag and again some craft paint. I'm using the burnt umber again. I'm squeezing some of the paint into the bag and then putting the bag beads inside the bag. This is a really easy way to get good coverage for your beads. Add as much paint as you need. Once they are coated, then you can dump them out on a protected surface and allow them to dry. Just spread them out so they don't stick together. So here my beads are all nice and dry. And this time I'm using some cream paint in a little baggie. And I'm not adding too much this time because I don't want full coverage on the beads. I want to create a really rustic look for these beads. So once you have the desired coverage, again, dump them out on a protected surface, spread them out and allow them to dry. These beads were partially dry and I noticed that some of the holes were filled with paint. So I just took a bamboo skewer to empty them out. Once your beads are dry, if you need to do more stressing, distressing, then go ahead and use your sanding block to create that look. Okay, so I am using the varnish again in a baggie and putting the beads in there as I really want that distressing to pop. And this looks amazing. I'm so impressed with how this really helps to see here. You can see how the colors just really come to life. So my pieces are all ready to go. Next, you're gonna need a really long strand of jute twine or any other string of your choosing. I'm gonna string the twine through the top of our cross first, and I'm gonna tie a knot. I really wanted to create some inspirational pieces for Easter time right now, just with everything that's been going on in the world. And I thought that these would be so fitting for the time of the year and also to help us to remember others during this time as well. So to make stringing the beads and everything else easier, I added some tape to the end of both strands. And then I am going to start to string the beads onto both strands, just like you see here. I'm not putting the beads on too tight as I want a little bit of movement in the string. If you have them too tight, it's really hard to move those beads around. So I got all the beads on and I just trimmed off the excess twine. 
and I am going to be using a piece of tape again and stringing just one strand on and then tying a knot and then trimming off the excess and it's ready to be put on display. This is a great place of course to use at Easter time but it could be left out for this year. Just a beautiful beautiful reminder to keep others in thought and prayer. Okay, so for this next project, you're gonna need a wood slat sign. I'm not sure where I got mine. I think I got it from Dollar Tree quite a while ago, but I've seen them in lots of other craft stores as well. So I'm using a gel walnut stain and I'm applying it using a rag. And this is from Deco Art. I'm applying in between the slats using a paintbrush. And then if I'm able to, I'll get my rag in there. Now I did notice that there was a little bit of glue and the gel stain didn't stick all that well so I left it quite heavy on those spots and here you can see I'm adding a second layer and I'm allowing it to sit a little bit longer and then wiping it off creating a darker look. So I've allowed the stain to dry and now I wanted to create a little banner for the bottom. I have this coffee stained index card but you can use any paper that you would like. I'm also going to be using the clear stickers again as well as some vintage photo distressing. I am going to be cutting my index card down to size that will fit nicely on the bottom wood slat. So I wanted to create a bit of like a fishtail banner look on the end so I'm just cutting up a little ways and then cutting off the corners and I do that for both ends. Now I am going to be using these stickers and I want to use the word prayers on here. So I found the middle of the banner and I'm going to start with the middle letter and work my way out to create the word prayers. I'm now going to use one of these little decorative stickers to add just a little bit of an embellishment on each side of the word prayers. I had these stickers in my stash, again they're clear, and I just found an embellishment that I liked and added it onto the little banner. So again, I'm using a makeup sponge to add my distress ink. I just wanted, again, that rustic country look. So I find that these inks really help to create that look. I'm using tacky glue to adhere the banner to the wood slat, but use any glue that you like to use. I'll put the banner in place and then I like to flip the piece over and add a little bit of weight just to help make sure that we got a good adhesion between the glue and the wood. So that's all dry now and I wanted to add this clip to the top so I'm just finding the center and then using a pencil I'm going to mark it through the whole of our clip at the top and then I'm going to be using a pearl head straight pin as my little hanger for my hook. The pearl head does not pull right through the whole of our clip, so that's why I went with this. I thought it would work perfectly for this project. I just pushed it into our mark just to create a bit of a hole. And again, I'm using my tacky glue and I'm going to put my pin through the hole of our clip and then push the pin into the wood and the glue. You may need a tool to push the pin into the wood. Allow the glue to set up and then it's ready to be used. 
This is a great little reminder of what the family can pray for. You could even add a little pencil tie onto this if you'd like. It looks so beautiful and I am definitely going to be putting this to use. So I had this old calendar that I've been saving and it was from the year 2020 and I picked it up at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree's got great calendars. I'm just finding which one I want to use. It is from December and it, as you can see, this is the verse here and I love the florals and this green looks really nice with our cross and tag. So I thought it was the perfect selection. I just cut it off using my craft knife and now I'm going to be creating a topper using these garden stakes that I picked up from Dollarama. You can also use painter sticks. So I just trimmed off the end and now I'm just going to be marking how much paper I need to trim off on both sides so it fits our little banner, piece of wood banner. So now I'm just using my paper trimmer and just cutting off the excess as needed. I'm just checking to make sure that I did trim off enough of the paper. So next I am going to be using a sturdy piece of poster board. This is actually quite thick and I am going to be using some spray adhesive on it. Now you can use any glue you'd like. Uh, if you use uh, decoupage glue I find that it kind of bubbles a bit so I took this out to my garage and gave it a good coat of the adhesive and now I am carefully applying the calendar page to the poster board then smoothing it out this worked really really well next you'll need to trim off any of the excess poster board So I wanted to create a rustic look on this piece and I can't remember where I saw this before but somebody used a sanding block and distressed a page like this and I really liked the look. So I decided to give it a try. You'll have to excuse the shaking but you can see how it just really creates a rustic look that really looks amazing. I love how this turned out. So once you have the desired look, you'll need a rag and you'll need to wipe off all that dust that you created. And then I am going to be using again my vintage photo, photo distress ink and I'm applying it to the edge. Continue to add the ink until you get the look that you like. So this was just before I had distressed my image, but I needed to cut down some more of these garden stakes. And some of these were actually kind of worked a bit too. So I wanted some flat ones. So I'm just gonna clip off the pointed ends on each piece. I need a total of four. Once you have those wood pieces cut down to size, you can then give them a coat of your burnt umber craft paint. And again, that'll look like a stain. So I've allowed that to dry. And now again, I'm using cream paint and I'm going to be giving each of these wood pieces two coats. Allow the paint to dry well in between each coat. Okay, so these pieces are all nice and dry and I'm going to be distressing the edges again using our sanding block. And I'm also scuffing up the surface as well. So again, I am going to be using some of this archival ink in the potting soil and a makeup sponge and I'm going to add it to the edges. Now again, this is a permanent ink. The distress ink isn't permanent. So if you got that one wet, it would move around, but I didn't want that to happen on these ones. So now I am going to be giving these all a coat of our matte varnish and allow it to dry well. Again, this just really helps the distressing to pop. Okay, so our wood pieces are all nice and dry. I already cut down a piece of jute twine that I needed for my hanger. 
So I'm just laying out these pieces, just trying to figure out my placement and which pieces I want on the front and the back. And then I'm going to be using a combination of tacky glue and hot glue to attach them. So I am going to be running um, some of the tacky glue just at the top portion or kind of in the middle actually. And then I'm going to just run a single bead of the hot glue at the bottom of this stick and then pressing our image into that. And then I am going to be adding some hot glue to the image on the top of the wood piece and on the side and then you'll want to press your next piece into place. You'll want to do the same for the bottom as well. So once you've got those pieces into place you can then add your hanger. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue onto each end at the top. is it is ready to be hung up for Easter. I think this is just so beautiful and so inspirational, perfect for Easter decor. So for this first project, I'm using a 3D galvanized butterfly from Dollar Tree. And then I'm also using this wood panel canvas board from Dollarama. You can get these at Michael's and at Amazon. I've got an Amazon affiliate store linked down below for you to check it out. I am going to stain this piece using a gel stain from DecoArt and it is in the color Walnut. I'm applying this using a rag. If you don't want to use stain, you could definitely paint this instead, or you can leave it as is, but I'm really, really loving this walnut stain from DecoArt. So to get in all those little tight little spots, I like to use a stiff bristle brush and I just apply it and then wipe it off with a rag and you can see how well that works. So once you've got your piece covered and it's all nice and dry, the next step is to fill in the background. Now I am using this leaf green craft paint. I didn't want the natural wood grain color to show through. If you want it to, by all means, feel free to do so. You can also cover the background using some scrapbook paper or some fabric would be really pretty too. So I've set the frame aside and I'm allowing that to dry and now I'm going to work on the butterfly. As you can see, I'm removing the hanger. We're not going to need that for this project today. And then I am going to color that inside of the butterfly with the leaf green paint again. I didn't want the shiny metal to be showing through my next step, but if you want to just leave it as is, by all means, feel free to do so. It's I just didn't want the silver color to be showing through. So I fill that all in with the craft paint and then I'll allow it to dry. An alternative would be to use some chalk paint. All right, both our pieces are dry. Now I need to attach this butterfly to the inside of our frame, but I'm going to be taking a pencil and just tracing around it as I'm going to be using two types of glue. E6000 and a hot glue gun. Now I'm doing it like this because I find that hot glue solidifies really quickly on tin. So I wanted to apply the glue on the wood portion instead. So I'm just going to add little dollops of the E6000 here and there. Of course, if you have another glue that you prefer to use, by all means, use that one. And now I'm going in and filling in with some hot glue. So now I'm going to press the butterfly, the backside of it, into the glue firmly. And you do have a little bit of time to move it if you made a little mistake like I did. And then I like to always flip it over and apply some weight and then allow the glues to set up. So it's all nice and dry and ready to go. Now I'm going to fill in around the butterfly with some preserved reindeer moss. 
Now I picked this up at my local dollar store, but you can get this at uh, Dollar Tree and other craft stores as well. I'm applying it using some hot glue, but again, just use your favorite adhesive. This package has assorted colors in green, so I thought that was really pretty. I love using reindeer moss so much. It's just so pretty and it's really soft look. Now, if you covered your backside using some scrapbook paper or fabric, you can omit this step. All right, so this is a really handy trick that I learned from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. She uses a um, silicone makeup applicator with her hot glue. So as you can see, it works really well for me to add some hot glue to the moss and then press it into those tight little spaces. All right, so now I am going to be using these Dollar Tree florals. This is a greenery pack that they always have and they just come out with some different styles from year to year. They are beautiful. They are my favorite florals. I also have these beautiful blossoms in my stash and these cherry blossoms. I am going to be filling in the inside of our butterfly using all these items. I'm starting off with greenery and again using some hot glue and pressing this into place uh, and I'll use the applicator when necessary. So I'm gonna to continue to fill the background with an assortment of the greenery. So if you use scrapbook paper or fabric on the backside, you could definitely fill the butterfly with the moss instead. There's lots of different ways to recreate this piece. I'm just loving this gardeny look that we are creating so far. So now I'm gonna to start to add my florals. I'm just cutting them down using some wire snips or you could use some scissors. And I'm just going to tuck these little flowers here in, in between the leaves. And I have these really pretty little yellow ones. And I think these kind of look a bit like wild flowers that you'd see in a garden. And now I'm adding some cherry blossoms. So if you buy a bundle of the white cherry blossoms, you can change up the color of these by painting them. I've done that before. I'm gonna have that video linked for you down in my description box as well so you can see how to do that. Next, I am adding these cute little peach flowers. I bought these ones a few years ago. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree has them anymore or not. You'll have to check your local store. And it's all ready to be put on display. Isn't this just so pretty? It definitely has that cottage garden look I was going for. This next project is using this beautiful cactus sign with the tin little plate that I had in my stash. I had two styles. I really like the adventure one. So I decided I wanted to do up this one that says plant a garden and watch it grow. And this is a really easy project. So I'm gonna be using my leaf green paint again, and I'm gonna cover up those a little cactus. I end up painting the backside of this piece as well. And I give this two coats of the craft paint and allow it to dry well. So the paint is all nice and dry and I didn't worry about it if it was a little bit blotchy as we are going to be covering up this piece as well. So just like the butterfly, I am going to be covering over the green paint with some leaves to start off with. Again, using that really cool little makeup applicator. Loving this tool so much. And you're just gonna want to place the greenery here and there until you get a look that you like. Again, you can cover the background of this with fabric, scrapbook paper, or even some moss, but I really wanted to go for that garden, cottage garden look. So I think these leaves are working out so well.
I'm going to continue to fill in with the greenery. I really like these fern stems. I have to say Dollar Tree did a great job on these greenery stems. They sell out so quickly. So as soon as you see them in your store, grab them. So now I'm going to start adding my florals. These were some little lavender stems and uh, I usually work in groups of three, but this time I just kind of made it really wild looking. So I didn't really go for specific numbers. I just added stuff until I got the look that I like. So I have my little purple flowers in there and now I'm going to add these white cherry blossoms. But as you can see in my stash here, I also have some pink cherry blossoms. I did pick those ones up at Dollar Tree. I believe it was last year. I have seen them there again this year. So you'll have to again check out your local store. So continue to add as many flowers as you like and then it's ready to be put on display. Isn't this so pretty? I love this cottage garden look. I think it's just gorgeous and it was such an easy project to make. Okay, so I don't know if Dollar Tree has these anymore, but I picked this up at my Dollar Tree last year and it is the galvanized wall vase. You could also use a cake pan in as a substitution. I would just glue a piece of uh, flower foam directly to the pan. Uh, just think outside the box with this project, but I'm going to be using up my stash. So that's why I'm digging this piece out. So if you got a stash of these, haul them out and let's get crafting. I wanted to cover the front panel and I recently found these wood grain rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and I really like this whitewash one. I felt like it would just keep everything nice and light. So I just trimmed off the edge because I want a perfect fit. So I'm just going to tape this into place and then I will be flipping this over and I'm going to trace around the backing using a pencil. As an alternative, Dollar Tree has some beautiful vinyl right now. You could cover the front panel with some of that, or you could use fabric, anything that you would like. Scrapbook paper would be really pretty as well. So I'm just gonna be removing the tape and then I'm going to trim off the excess. Now I will have a little spot that still needs to be filled in. So I just kind of work around it and I get that all perfectly fit so I just pull the backing off and then I carefully attach this to the front panel. So of course I'll be getting a craft stick and I'll be burnishing the surface to get the transfer to stick to the galvanized metal. Again, Dollar Tree has been coming out with some beautiful patterns with these rub-on transfers so I would definitely go and check out to see what you can find but you can also find these online or at craft stores I have seen them in my local dollar uh, dollar store as well not exact patterns but something similar so I'm just going to continue to piece this together until I got that front panel all covered up so as you can see, I have the odd spot that didn't adhere. So I'm just taking a little bit of a scrap piece and I'm going to press it onto those little spots that are <laughs> blank or missing the uh, transfer. And you can see how well that worked. 
I decided to cover this with a coat of some clear Mod Podge sealant and it's in the mat and that will just prevent this from getting all scratched up. All right, so now I am going to cut down a piece of a dry floral foam that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I'm just making sure that I have a piece that fits inside. And then I'm just gonna pull it out just like this and apply some hot glue and then press it down into place. I just lifted up the lid or the lip of the metal there. And then I was able to get that right down inside. I'm just gonna cut down a few scrap pieces and then put those on the side of our big chunk. Again, applying it with some hot glue. So you can see how nicely I've got that all fit in there. All right, I was really excited to find this next item. And that is some green colored Spanish moss. Now I found this in my Canadian Dollar Tree. It's put out by Multicraft, so I don't know if the American stores have this or not, but the Canadian stores do, so go check those out. But you could also use the gray Spanish moss as well. I just took some and I'm just going to be covering up our foam. I'll be attaching the moss just with a bit of hot glue. An alternative would be to create some wire pins and just pressing that into foam and that'll help anchor the moss into place as well. But I just found it easier to use some hot glue. So I'm just gonna push the moss into place and then I am going to get out all of those beautiful florals that I had picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm using the same florals for all three pieces, but feel free to mix yours up if you'd like. Again, I always start my floral arrangements with greens. It's just how I was trained to do it. I used to be a florist, so um, it works for me, but by all means, I would love for you to recreate this any way that works best for you. So I'm just gonna trim the pieces down and stick the wires or glue these pieces into place. As you can see, all these pieces have been reused over and over again. So I don't usually glue mine into place, but please feel free to do so. I do end up gluing some of them in, uh, but these pieces I don't bother because uh, my stems are long enough and it's not gonna get bumped around, so I was okay not using glue on these particular pieces. As you can see, I'm bending some of the stems so they overhang on the edge. I really like that look, but you don't have to do that. An alternative would be to put a really cute little saying on the front. I thought that would be really neat as well. So I've filled this right up with the greenery, as you can see, and now I'm gonna add my flowers. So I am trimming down some of these longer ones. And again, I'm going to just bend the stems so they overhang with my greenery. These particular ones work really well for that because they are a nice long stem. Some of the blossoms were missing because I was pulling them off for other projects. So I'm just going in and adding some of those back on. So I'm just going to continue to add some of these florals as until I get that beautiful garden look that I'm going for. So there was something really cool about these cherry blossoms. I noticed that there was like a little bit of a little twisty branch that was on them. I thought that was really pretty. Oh, and that reminds me, if you want, you could actually add some real branches to this as well. I typically do that, but for these projects, I decided not to because I really wanted that cottage garden look and I thought this made it perfect for that. I find that the twigs, I love them, I really do, but they really create more of a rustic look. So once you have the flowers in place, it's ready to be hung on the wall. I think this is gorgeous. Again, such a beautiful cottage garden look. So for this first project, I'm using this sandwich board and it's got that chalkboard effect on the front. I'm gonna be using this white 
acrylic gesto. It's the Artist Loft brand from Michaels. And I'm going to apply a coat of that over top of the chalkboard sign portion of this sandwich board. I find that gesso is a great primer. I like to use it a lot on surfaces like this because it covers up the color really well and then you don't have to apply as much craft paint. So I allow that to dry well and then I'm going to apply the craft paint of your color choice. I'm using cream and I'm just applying that onto the surface and then spreading it out with a soft brish bristle brush. You can apply a one to two coats of your craft paint. It really depends on the transparency of the craft paint that you use. So another thing you could do is paint out the frame. I chose to leave mine just as is. All right, so our craft paint is all nice and dry. Next, I'm gonna be using a piece of acetate that's the same size as the inside of our frame. And then you will want some napkins in the pattern of your choosing. This one is from Dollar Tree. Now you're going to want to use a piece of tape to remove the layers on the back side of your napkins. It just makes it so much easier to remove. So now I'm gonna place my acetate on the area that I want to use on the inside of our frame. So this is a technique that I learned from both Patio Elf as well as our Upcycled Life. I'm gonna have both those videos and the channels linked down below so you can go check out the original videos that I learned from. I'm just going to trace around the acetate so I have the exact size I need for this project. Then I'll take my scissors and cut it out. Now in the original tutorial that I had seen, she actually used a sheet protector sleeve and she was applying this technique to a larger surface that didn't have a frame like I'm sharing here. Uh, but I am um, going to be doing it this way because I want it to fit inside my frame. So you want to spray your acetate and then put the right side of your image down onto this water. Now I should have been more careful with the placement of my napkin because I did end up getting some wrinkles. Um, I know that on Patio Elf's channel, when she did this technique, she was being quite careful, so then she wouldn't get many wrinkles. Uh, but I did my best and smoothed them out. I was actually really impressed with how this technique worked, so just keep watching, it is pretty cool. So I just wiped up my excess water and then I'm going to be applying a good amount of decoupage glue onto the painted portion of our sandwich board. So I'm just going to nicely smooth it out. I don't want predominant brush strokes, so I am using a soft bristle, bristle brush as well. So once you have that in place, you can then take a rag or a sponge and just remove any excess water off of the napkin just by dabbing it, just like I did right there. Just be very gentle with how you do that. Next, you'll place the napkin down into the glue and then gently spread it out with your fingers, just as I'm showing you right here. You can see it's all in place and the acetate is facing up. I'm gonna use a piece of tape to lift the acetate up and you'll see it pops up and the napkin stays in place in the glue. It is so, so cool. So you're gonna want to set this aside and allow it to dry. All right, it is all nice and dry and I ended up having a little bit of extra napkin overlapping onto the frame as you can see. So I'm just using a really sharp utility knife and I'm just gonna cut along the frame gently to remove that excess. I'm sure that if you measured right, <laughs> then you probably won't have this problem. But if you do end up having a little bit of overlap, then this is a great way to remove that. Okay, I want to protect my napkin, so I'm going to go over it again with a coat of my decoupage glue. I do end up adding quite a bit because the napkin ended up absorbing quite a bit, bit of it, so just keep that in mind. All right, so our decoupage glue is all nice and dry, and you can leave it as is. It's gorgeous, but I wanted to use this saying in the frame. I am going to be 
Adding a little bit of this blue pigment ink on the edge, I find that it just helps images like this just pop away from a busy background such as this one. So I'm going to just ink that up. Looks very pretty, I love it. And now I'm going to add some foam adhesive tape to the back of our image. I like to do this when I want something to stand out a little bit more. It just helps to give it a bit more dimension. So I filled in the back with our foam tape and now I'm figuring out the placement and then I will remove the backing of our tape and then you can put it in place as desired. So again, you can stop right here, but you know me by now, if you've been watching me for a while, I love to add a touch of nature whenever I can. And I decided that I wanted to frame out my image with some branches. So I like to go foraging for my branches and whatnot. And I would just have a stash of them in my collection and I just cut them down to size. And then I will be adding these using some hot glue. So I continue to add the branches around our image and then it's ready for display. I have to say I love this technique. It worked really well. I find that there's hardly any wrinkles and if there were it was because I didn't lay the napkin down properly but I am still quite pleased with how it turned out. For our next project, I'm using this Dollar Tree truck wood sign and I'm removing the hanger off as you can see right here. Uh, but don't throw that away, we're gonna be using that again. So this was a handy tip that I received from a few viewers and that is to use a blow dryer or a heat tool to loosen the adhesive on wood embellishments like this. So I just applied my heat to the top and the bottom and then I used a flat spatula to get underneath to try and lift up the wood embellishments without damaging anything. So I just continued to apply some heat and then use my tool and I was blown away at how well this works. So to all of you who suggested this, thank you. So with a little work and some patience, I managed to get all my pieces off and I'm just using a sanding block just to remove any of the rough texture that was left behind by any adhesive if there was any left behind. Next, I select my napkins. Now you can get napkins everywhere it seems these days and you can find so many beautiful patterns just like this. I like to use patterns that are all over and randomly placed on a napkin. And as you can see, you tape works so well to remove the backing of these napkins. So now I'm going to take my blank truck and I'm going to figure out the placement I want for our decoupage. <laughs> so I'm just going to move it around and then once I get that figured out, I am going to take my scissors and cut around the truck. I don't want too much of an overhang, but just enough so if I do wiggle it around a little bit, there is going to be a bit of flexibility. So I'm going to be using my Deco Art decoupage glue again and a soft bristled brush. Going to want to lay the right side of your napkin facing up on top of our truck. Now for this technique, you're going to apply the glue on top of your napkin and you're starting from the middle and working your way out. Now this technique, I learned this from Patio Elf and she had originally done this technique on glass. Now I 
should have done it that way. I should have done it on a piece of glass. I'm sure it would have worked out way better than doing it on wood, but I wanted to give it a whirl and see how um, I could do to see if it would work without putting a layer of decoupage down first. And it does, but it was kind of tricky. The napkin kept on wanting to lift up on me and I was getting a little frustrated admittedly, but like I said, Patio Elf originally did it on glass. So another thing both ladies do is use some saran wrap to press out the wrinkles. Now I tried it on this, but again, um, it, it just actually wasn't really working for me. I find that using my fingers very gently works better. I mean, this worked okay, but I was finding the napkin was wanting to lift up a little bit every time I dabbed down, but it definitely could have been user error on my part. So as you can see, I just used my fingers. So I set my piece aside to dry. And while that was drying, I decided to work on my wood pieces. I'm using Arteza outdoor acrylic paints in brown, this beautiful dark teal and a gray. I'm using the brown on the wood slats on the back of the truck. And I'm just using one coat on each piece. So this dark teal is actually called Jungle Green and it was a perfect match with the napkin that I use. I was actually quite amazed. So I was really happy with that. So I am just gonna continue to paint my pieces. The hubcaps I ended up painting gray. Okay, so now my wood pieces are drying and my truck and the decoupage glue is all nice and dry. So you can see that there are some wrinkles, but I'm okay with that. I figured that it just kind of adds to the charm of this vintage looking truck. I'm going to be using this emery board now to remove the excess around the edge. It would just be like using a sanding block on the edge. It actually works really, really well. Again, this was recommended by some of you, my viewers. So I removed all the way around the edge of the truck and now I'm working on the inner portions of the truck. So I'm just using my scissors to trim out the excess in the window. And again, I'm using the emery board to get in there. It works great in all these tight little small spots. So the door handle here, I couldn't get my emery board inside there. So I'm just using this palette knife and just scraping the way or the excess away. I'm just being careful not to damage the wood. So I do the same thing with the door and I use a combination of the emery board as well as my palette knife. All right, our truck is all ready to go and our wood pieces, but I am detail oriented if you haven't <laughs> noticed by now and I decided that I wanted to distress all my wood pieces so I'm just using a sanding block and I am sanding the edges of the wood pieces and then I also end up sanding the edges of the truck. Now you'll see here how that looks and I like it but I'm gonna end up doing one more technique and I'll show you that here in a bit, but I discovered I needed to do a few other steps before I went any further. So here's one of those steps. I did not like the gray against the napkins, so I'm adding a bit of cream paint over top and it dulled down that gray it just kind of warmed it up a bit. And then I also ended up taking my sanding block once they were dry and distressing these as well. So I'm done sanding all my pieces and they look great, but you can see here, it doesn't look like this piece has any tires. So I'm using a circle a die that I have in my stash and it is the perfect size for the wheel portion of our wood truck. Just use a pencil to trace around the top of the die and then I will be filling it in with some paint. So I'm toning down the black paint with just a little bit of the gray. I felt the 
straight up black was just going to be a little too harsh for our vintage truck. So now I've got my black paint dulled down and I'm going to fill in the tire portion of our truck. So the beauty of this is that you are going to paint within our circle and I do end up going outside of our circle just a little bit, but not by much. Uh, I just thought the proportion looked a little off, but so you can see here, I filled that in and once you got both of them filled in, you can go back in and add a little extra if needed and then allow it to dry. Our paint is all dry and now I am going to distress the edges of the truck. Now this part is optional. <laughs> I, I don't know why I get really hung up on some of these details, but I don't know. I find that sometimes they just really elevate a piece. So these steps are completely and totally optional. Okay, so I felt like, again, it just needed another step. I'm using archival ink in potting soil. I am going to add just a little bit to each of my wood pieces on the edge and just a little bit here and there on the surface. I wanted it to look like there was rust on the truck or like some dirt as if this truck has been at the flower farm or something like that. So. That's why I decided to add this bit of ink. Now archival ink is permanent, so that's why I decided to go with that. You could use distress ink if you want, but that is not permanent. I am adding it here to the truck as well. Again, I wanted that aged look and that aged patina. It even helps the door to pop just a little bit better. So at this point, I thought I was ready to start assembling it, but when I laid this wood frame on the back of the truck, I'm like, wait a second, it doesn't look right. And I realized I needed to paint the inside of this frame part here. So I just went ahead and used my brown paint. I had actually seen others do this as well, and it looks a lot more realistic then. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that dry, and then I, I'm going to start to glue everything together. So as I said before at the beginning, I am going to be using this as a wall hanging. So I poked those holes again and then I was ready to start laying all my pieces out. I'm using hot glue, but of course use any adhesive that you like to use. If you're using hot glue, you'll want to move quickly. So I'm just applying my wood piece down and you have a little bit of wiggle room, not much. So uh, you want to really do a good job on lining everything up when you go to lay these pieces down. The wood embellishments are in place and now I decided that I wanted to make this look like it was from a flower farm. I'm adding some greenery to the top portion of the wood frame at the back of our truck, trimming off any excess on the back side so it lays flat. And then I'm going to go in and add some flowers. Just trimming these pieces off and applying them using some hot glue. And these are just some scraps of flowers that I had in my stash. I thought these little peach flowers would tie everything together nicely. I think it's so cute. I am loving how this is turning out. And once you got all those flowers in place, you can then put your string back in place. I'm just using that same jute string and you'll just have to make sure that you kind of weave the string through the flowers so you can hang it up. So even though I struggled with the decoupage technique in the beginning, I am still super happy with how this truck looks. Isn't it just gorgeous? I'm really happy with this project.
For this decoupage technique, you are going to need a wood plaque sign of some type. I got mine from Dollarama. Actually, a friend had gifted this to me, but you can find these at any craft store or lots of different dollar stores. You'll want to apply a generous amount of your decoupage glue on the surface of your wood sign. Now, again, I am using the Deco Art decoupage glue, but use your favorite decoupage medium. So again, for this technique, I had learned this from both Patio Elf and our Upcycled Life. I will again have those videos and channels linked down below. I made sure that I applied the decoupage glue right up to the edge. So I allowed that first layer to dry and then I'm gonna go in again and apply another layer. This layer of decoupage glue is really important and you also wanna make sure you get the edges. So I'm gonna to continue to apply this and allow it to dry well. I have found other people have done a lot of these other techniques as well, but I found these two channels had the best tutorials. JISC is a store here in Canada. I'm not sure if you guys have it down in the United States or not, but they are kind of a European store similar to Ikea, but on a smaller scale. They've got gorgeous napkins. So I am going to be using this beautiful floral napkin and again, pulling away the backing sheets with my tape. So I am going to figure out where I want my napkin to be. You're going to need a heat safe pad. I'm using my Cricut heat pad and you're going to place your wood piece down and then figure out the placement of your napkin. In the meantime, you've got your iron heating up. I've got mine heating to the number four. You'll need a piece of parchment paper as that is heat safe. And then you're going to start to move your iron over top. Now this is in real time. It's not sped up so you can see how slow I'm going, but I'm trying not to linger in one spot. Now, next time I do this, I am definitely going to try my Cricut heat press, but I thought since not everybody has a heat press, I wanted to try the iron. So I am making sure I'm focusing on the edges of our wood piece because we really want those to adhere down. So what's happening is that the napkin is being melted into the decoupage glue. I have to say that this is by far my absolute favorite technique there were no wrinkles, not one wrinkle. It was so cool. And I actually found that it was really, really satisfying to do. So continue to use your iron on your wood piece until you got all your edges adhered down because we don't want any of our napkin lifting or tearing. We want a really good, nice, secured napkin. So I had set this aside and I allowed it to cool down and oh, it just feels so smooth. I am so happy with how it turned out. So before I add another layer of decoupage glue, I decided I would trim off the excess napkin, just using my scissors right here. And then I am going to go over it with another coat of my decoupage glue. I end up using quite a bit because the napkin did soak up quite a bit of the glue. So I'm just going to apply that and then I am going to allow this to dry. Okay, so the glue is all nice and dry. I'm using my sanding block to remove the excess around the edge. Again, I find that this works best. So I'm just gonna continue to work around that edge and then we are ready to embellish our sign. So I decided to keep this project simple for you guys. I'm just going to add this welcome galvanized tin piece from Dollar Tree. They have a pack of three over the autumn season and I thought this piece would work great. I am using some Gorilla silicone sealant on this plate piece. 
I find that then you've got a little bit of wiggle room and this sealant works really, really good as an adhesive. So I'm just going to add little dollops here and there on the back side of our word and then I'm gonna press it into place. And you do have a little bit of wiggle room to move it. And then I like to always flip it upside down, add a little bit of weight to allow it to dry. And here it is. Isn't it pretty? It's so simple, but yet it makes such a statement. Okay, for my next DIY, I have these metal baskets and these leftover succulent pots from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna give them a coat of my heirloom white Rust-Oleum paint. But before you go and spray paint, remove any labels. Once everything is dried and cured, you can start putting your pieces together. I have this leftover chain from a previous project and I got that chain from Dollar Tree. I am going to find some pieces that are the same length and join the two baskets together. I'm just using my wire cutters, but use any tool that you have on hand. And I'm just pulling one of the links apart so I can hook it through the basket edge. Once you have a chain on each side, you can close those links up. I'm now going to attach those chains to the upper basket. I am just going to be using a little bit of florist wire. I will be creating a little bit of a hook and threading it through the mesh and connecting the pieces together. Do the same for the other side. I am going to take two equal lengths of chain again. I am going to add one extension to another piece. Once you have two chains of the desired length, you can pry open one of the links and thread it through the top basket. Once you've attached both lengths of chain, you can use that hook that came with the kit and use it as your hanger. Okay, now on to those cute little pots. I didn't worry about spray painting the edges as those will be covered using some preserved reindeer moss. I'm gonna attach the moss using some hot glue. I'm done with the moss and now I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree florals. 
I am going to snip them down using wire cutters in more manageable pieces. Once you have all those florals snipped, you can just start to add the stems to your little pots. You can feel free to glue these into place. I am not doing that just in case I decide I want to change them up to the seasons. I am going to be using a little bit of glue on these shorter pieces. And here are those cute little pots all done. Now we can start to place the pots in the baskets. I absolutely love how this looks. It'll be perfect for our main bathroom. Here is a recap of all the projects that we made within this video. I've got timestamps as well as all the links to the original videos down below as well in the comments section. I appreciate each and one of you joining me here today. Here's some more spring inspired DIYs for you to check out. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.